presents Jimmy Clitheroe as the Clitheroe Kid, with Peter Sinclair, Patricia Burke, Leonard Williams, Danny Roth, and Diana Day in... What a guy! That's better, Jim. After the hard day's work, you can't beat a good wash down in the old sink with your braces dangling. Hey, what's that funny noise, Mr. Whittle? Is your tummy upset? <laughs> no, it's the plumbing, Jim. It's that old. It's what they call antiquarian. Here, sling us that towel over. The one hanging on the gas oven door. Here you are, Mr. Whittle. Hey, this is a tea towel. That's all right, Jim. I've done all the washing up. <laughs> now, while I'm having a rub down, what was you telling me when I started me toilet? About the fireworks. I was telling you why I'd like to light a rip wrap and put it down on these gym shorts. Oh, what? You were saying he'd been going around together collecting pennies with a guy. That's right. We went into partnership. His guy and my pram. Three equal shares of the profit. That's what caused all the bother. I'm sorry, Jim. I don't copy your desk yet. Now, just cut the cackle and get down to the Burr credentials. <laughs> now, what happened over the share out? Well, I'll show you with these pennies. I was sharing them out like this, you see. Huh? A penny for you, Ozzy. A penny for me. That makes tuppence for you, Ozzy. And one, two, tuppence for me. That makes threepence for you, Ozzy. And one, two, three... <laughs> Threatens for me. <laughs> that makes four months for you, Ozzy, and one, two, three, four months for me. But, Jim, you've got ten pennies to his four already. I've heard of cooking the books, but this is a seven-course dinner. <laughs> Didn't he rumble what you were doing? Yes, he did. My own fault. I should have waited till it went a bit darker. Why is that? Then he wouldn't have noticed his pennies were buttons. <laughs> Oh, Jim, <laughs> sharing money with you must be like playing snap with an octopus. <laughs> no wonder the partnership's been exterminated. What are you going to do now? You can't collect without a guy. Well, I'll soon make one, a super one and all. All I want is some old clothes, some sacking, straw for the stuffing, and our Susan's boyfriend, Alfie Hall. <laughs> I shouldn't think he'd be much help at making a guy. I don't want him to help. I just want him for a model. Another cup of tea, Theodore? Uh, no, thank you, Mrs. Clitheroe. I won't have a second cup. Oh, go on. There's plenty more in the pot. Uh, no, thank you. Uh, but I've noticed I'm putting a little fat on my pot. <laughs> uh, round uh, my... Uh, round me. Oh, this is serious. We don't want you losing that slim, elegant figure, do we? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Kiddo, do you mind? <laughs> putting on surface fat is no laughing matter. Oh, I know. Have you noticed his father lately? Yes. Uh, Mr. Sinclair is looking rather rotund. Phil, what can you expect? He does like his glass of beer. Yeah, the way his clothes are fitting him, he's more like one of the barrels. <laughs> and I dare give them away. You should have been here yesterday when Mrs. Peters called about the jumble sale at the church. Oh, the trouble I had getting Father to part with his old clothes. Oh, I know what you mean. I remember the struggle I once had trying to get some clothes off Mrs. Billington's. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, I, I don't mean it that way. <laughs> oh, you are in a frivolous mood tonight, aren't you? <laughs> You're all right, Pat, all right. Well, what have you done with it? With what, Father? Old sports coat. Where is it? I haven't got it. I'll bet you haven't. Probably just passed through your hands on the way to the jumble seal with all my other clothes. I think I'd better join a nudist camp. Hello there, Mr. Sinclair. Hello, Theodore. Now, look, Pat, I won't have you given my clothes away without my permission. I haven't given your coat away. I don't know where it is, and I don't care either. Hello, what's this? Today in Parliament. <laughs> oh, that's just what I want. My dear little grandson coming in with his white cracks. Oh, I'm glad you're in a good mood, Granddad. <laughs> I've got something to tell you. I've tried it on, and it fits. What are you talking about? That mouldy old sports coat with the beer stains on it. 
What? Jimmy, what do you know about that sports coat? It's just right for my guy, folks. What, you young rascal? I'll turn your head off. Oh, Hank, what have I done wrong now? Taking my coat without asking me just for your stupid guy to wear. But, Grandad, it's only for a couple of days. You can have it back Tuesday morning, and I'll slip you some treacle toffee in one of the pockets. Oh, don't try to be funny with me. No, I want that sports coat back this minute. Right now, do you understand? Oh, all right, Grandad. But I didn't think you'd mind. I mean, Mum said you'd got a bit too big for it. Look, I don't want any comments from you about my size. You'll return that coat this minute. And you'll stop borrowing clothes for your guy. Now, do you understand? Oh, heck, does that mean you want your kilt back as well? <laughs> my kilt? <laughs> I thought you'd think I was clever making a guy that was different. I was going to call him Guy Mac Fawkes. <laughs> I remember you. Oh, you're the one who made my dreams come true. Oh. Wait, Sue. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, it's Susan. Yes, Alfie. Yeah, isn't it nice, just the two of us, sitting here alone in your front room with that lovely coal fire? Coal fire? Alfie, that's our new electric fire. It looks like coal burning, but it's only imitation. Is it? Ooh, that was... Well, when you went out just now, I tried to poke it. What? <laughs> You haven't damaged it. Oh, Grandad will go mad. Yeah, it's all right, Susan. I was only having you on. <laughs> yeah, I fooled you for a minute, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, hey, can I ask you a question? What is it? Well, it, it's something I've been wanting to ask you for days. Well, what is it? Well, Susan, w what I want to ask you is this. What have you done with my coat and trousers? What have you done with my coat and... Okay. What are you doing in here? Sitting by the fire with you, Susan. Not you, I'll be him. Timmy, what do you want? I scrounged some old clothes up the street for me guy. I put them in the kitchen just now while I went out for two whipped cream walnuts, and when I got back, they were gone. Well, you must have eaten them then. Alfie, if anybody ever tells you you haven't got the brains of a donkey, thump them. <laughs> because you have. <laughs> you have, uh. Look, I know what's happened to those old clothes. I thought there were some more things for Mrs. Peter's jumble sale, so I took them across to her house. What? You big daft Nelly. The, hey, no, now, there's no need to be like that, Jimmy. Susan did what she did without knowing. Well, I mean, she knew she was doing it, but she didn't know what, what she was doing when she did it. She, she thought she was doing something else. It's all right, you talking, Alfie. What would you do if she took your coat and trousers? <laughs> Freeze to death. <laughs> Look, if you want to get them back, all you have to do is to go across to Mrs. Peter's house, tell her it was a mistake, and ask for them back. All right, then. I will. But be careful when you knock on the door. Little Shirley might answer it. And you're scared of her, aren't you? You what? The day I'm scared of a soppy girl, Grandad will start having his nights out in a milk bar. <laughs> oh, I think little Shirley fancies you, Jimmy. Oh, don't talk wet. Hey, Jimmy Clitheroe, oh, you're blushing. I'm not. Oh, yes, yeah, you've gone all red. <laughs> Thanks, heaven. Poor little girls, poor little girls get bigger every day. Yes, and so does our Susan. <laughs> what are you on about now? You in those tight jeans. If you get any bigger, you'll need a shoehorn to put them on and a potato peeler to get them off. Well, it's nice of you to call round, Jimmy. Come into the living room. Uh, no, I, I don't want to disturb anybody. Oh, there's nobody in. Mother's out collecting jumbles. What have you come for? It isn't to invite me to your bonfire on Monday, is it? Not on your... Uh, no, uh, I've, uh, I've come for some old clothes. Oh, I see. Yes, I put them on one side for me guy, but our Susan brought them across to your mother by mistake. Oh, so I've come to ask her for them back. Oh, I see. Well, perhaps I can get them for you. All you've got to do is ask me. Oh, good. To your bonfire. Oh, heck. <laughs> Look, Shirley, I can't invite a girl to me bonfire. I'm in the Black Hand Gang. If Ozzy and Charlie Thompson knew, 
You wouldn't half give me what for. But who cares about them? I don't. You would do if they hung you on the school railings by your trousers. <laughs> they did that to you? Yes, and I've, I'd have been there yet if my buttons hadn't just snapped. <laughs> I walked out of singing practice with a girl. Oh, you went out with her, did you? I had to. We both put our hands up at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's why I can't come to your bonfire. Well, you can see how it is, can't you? Yes, I can. Well, if you're going, good night, Jimmy. Good night, sir. Wait a minute, what about them old clothes? Well, I couldn't tamper with those. Mother wouldn't like it. And the vicar's coming round to collect them later tonight. He might call before she gets back. Well, me guy's already made. I've got to get him something to wear if I want to collect any money. Hey, are they the ones behind the city? Never mind, they're all mixed up and we mustn't touch them. Here, let me, Luke. Look, those look like my trousers. Jimmy Kidrope, leave those things alone. Yes, I'm sure they are. Uh, now for the jacket. Come here, give me those things. Surely let go of them, the mine. Get off them, you're tearing the turnips. I'm not going to let go. You've no right to be meddling with them. For the last time, surely will you let go of my trousers. Whatever is going on in here? Hey? Oh, thank you, Mrs. Peters. I'm just teaching Shirley how to play tug of war. He's not. He's trying to take some of the clothes. Jim Clitheroe, I'm surprised at you. Well, some of these clothes are mine, and that's why my mum told me to come and ask for them back again. Oh, did she? Yes, she did, so you better just... Uh, mum... <laughs> Get out of this house, you young hooligan. Well, oh, mum, it's all a mistake. I can explain. Look, I'll deal with you when I get home. I just apologise to Mrs. Peters and then clear off. Oh, heck, I'm sorry, Mrs. Peters. That's all right, Jimmy. But I'm still not clear as to what all this is about. Never mind, dear. We've had enough trouble at home over this. Off you go, Jimmy, this minute. Oh, all right, Mum. Good night, Jimmy. Good night, Mrs. Peters. I'll come to the door with you, Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy? Don't you talk to me, you... you girl, you. <laughs> but, Jimmy, I just thought... I can put some of those clothes on one side and sneak them across to you in the morning. I'm not interested. You're nothing but a daft, soppy troublemaker. Say that again. <laughs> but Mummy's collected so many, she'll never miss them. I'll get some for you, shall I? Oh, thanks, Shirley. You're a pal. And in return, you'll invite me to your bonfire. Yes, uh, this is blackmail. <laughs> Look, Shirley, I don't have any girls at me bonfire, not with Ozzy and Charlie Thompson around. But, Jimmy, it's childish. You mean to say you don't let them see you with a girl? Listen, do you know what they were going to do to me the other night? Get some glue, stick feathers all over me, and then throw me in the duck pond. And all because they said they saw me walking home with a big fat girl. But they didn't do that, did they? No. When they got a closer look at her, they ran away like mud. <laughs> She must have been a big girl to scare them like that. Big girl? It was me granddad with his kilt on. <laughs> Penny for the guy. Penny for the guy. Don't forget the guy, sir. Hey, sir, don't forget the guy. Hold me on work. Oh, Sonny, will you get out of me way? Oh, sorry, sir, but I've only collected tuppens today. I'm sorry, but you're too late. I've just given all my pennies away to another boy with a guy. Oh, well, don't worry about that, mister. I'll get you some change in the sweet shop here. You cheeky young devil. Clear off. Go on, out of me way. Oh, this is a dead loss. Hey, lady, don't forget the guy. Remember, remember, the 5th of November. <laughs> oh, another one. You're unlucky, Sonny. I don't think I've much change left. Oh, anything will do. Well, I, I gave most of it to another boy round the corner. Oh, dear. Well, I'm afraid that's all I have. Oh, it doesn't matter how much it is. As Mum says, it's the thought... What's this? A blooming name, <laughs> Well, if you don't want it... Oh, that's all right, that. lady. I'll, I'll have it. Bye-bye, then. If I see you tomorrow, I'll give you another contribution. Oh, marvellous. Then I can get weighed. <laughs> Hello, Jimmy. Having any luck? Yes, plenty, and it's all bad. Everybody I ask say they've just given all the money to somebody else. 
At this rate, by Monday, I'll be lucky if I can buy a share in a box of matches. <laughs> it's hardly worth the row. What row? Who is all this? When I came out, here he was on my pitch. Was he? Hmm, yes, but he was off round the corner quick enough when I finished with him. Oh, you didn't hit him, did you? No, I never touched him. I didn't, uh, I didn't need to. I just picked up his guy, twisted his head round backwards, bent its arms, tied its legs round its neck, threw it on the pavement and said, Right, Ozzy, your neck. <laughs> Oh, Jim, you are terrible. <laughs> I'll bet he's still running. Well, you lose your bet. He's round the corner collecting with his guy. Well, I don't care what... You what? You mean, he's the one round the corner who's been getting all my money? How do you mean your money? The money I would have got if he hadn't been there. Right for you, Ozzy Higginbottom. Jimmy, what are you going to do? Ozzy Higginbottom. <laughs> Bring that pram round, Shirley. We might make a few bob out of Ozzy when we're pushing him home in it. Hold the head still, Alfred. I can't throw him properly if you keep fidgeting. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Crayshaw, but I am enjoying this. You know, I haven't made a guy since I was a kid. <laughs> What do you mean? I made that guy. You're just repairing it. You were? Well, when you brought it back, all you had was an armful of straw and a heap of old clothes. Yes, Oswald Higginbottom certainly made a mess of it. To think he attacked you simply because your guy was better than his. I'm glad you didn't retaliate. Um, yes, well, I did sort of defend myself. Oh, yes, well, he struck you first, didn't he? Uh, yes, and he hurt my knuckles. <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> my feelings. Well, always remember the soft answer, turn us away, Ralph. Ah, that's what my mother always says when she hits my father. Yeah. She, she says, the, the coward strikes the blow and the brave man gives you cheek. I mean, turns it round. I bet, I bet the cheek. The, the other one, that is, I think. Show his mouth up, Mr. Craythorpe. Cheek. The guy, I mean. I want to go out collecting. Oh, yes, well, don't be impatient, James. Alfred, pass me the needle, please. Yeah. Cotton. There. Thimble. There. Scissors. Look, Dr. Kildare. <laughs> Just tie the ends up and let me get out. You'll find Jimmy in there, Mr. Higginbottom. I'll just go and get my mother. Thanks, Susan. And while you're at it, you'd better get an ambulance for him. Oh, it's the eight months. Little <laughs> I'm going to give you the hiding you deserve. Hey, now, just a minute, Mr. Eight Man. Monkey, uh, the Higginbottom. <laughs> You can't come here, it's in a boy. Oh, who's going to stop me? I'm, 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 I'm oh. not sure. <laughs> Mr. Greythorpe will. That's a good kind, James. <laughs> uh, keep quiet now, James. Uh, now, look, Mr. Higginbottom, can't we talk this over quietly and sensibly? All right, we'll talk it over. As soon as I've clouted this brat. <laughs> come here. Oh, help, please. He's gone mad. Send for the vet. What? Oh, help Mr. Craythorpe, help me. Tell him he's a coward if he hits me. He's that, you're a coward. Oh, am I? <laughs> no, 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 not you. He means you should turn the other cheek. I haven't finished belting this one yet. Oh, oh let go, you big bully. Mr. Higginbottom, stop that. What do you think you're doing? I'm sorry, Mrs. I'm afraid I've lost my temper. Oh, oh ma'am, ma'am. Oh, ma'am, he's broken every bone in me sit upon. <laughs> You'd better have a good reason for this. Listen, my lad was minding his own business. Out with his guy collecting for bonfire night. When this delinquent of yours comes dashing round the corner, swinging his guy round his head and starts batting Ozzy with it. So, that's how your guy was broken. Is that true, Jimmy? Yes, he's got a hard head, you know. <laughs> I mean, did you sit on him first? Oh, that's not all. After that, he made Ozzy sit in an old pram for half an hour with a mask over his face. <laughs> I didn't want to frighten the people. <laughs> what was that? I didn't want to fight in front of the people. Uh, uh, look, uh, ma'am, Ozzy pins my pitch. That'll do. I'm sorry, Miss Higginbottom. You can leave this to me. Jimmy's grandfather will have a few words to say to him later on. Yes, and I know what they'll be. You must learn never to bully someone weaker than yourself. <laughs> and he'll wallop seven bells out of me. <laughs> Get my 
my cream gloves out of the front room, love. They're in the top drawer of the sideboard. Oh, all right, Mother. I'm not ready myself yet. And give your grandfather a shout. It's ten to eleven, and you know how the vicar hates people coming late to the service. Right, oh, I'll call him. I'd better call Troublemaker as well. Granddad, Jimmy, it's ten to eleven. Mother said to hurry up. Is that you, Susan? Or was it the croak of a wild bullfrog? <laughs> Oh, you're in the lounge, are you, funny boy? Well, get out of my way. I've got to get Mother's gloves, and you better get ready for church. I'm not going. <laughs> oh, aren't you? Well, Granddad will soon change your mind. Oh, no, I won't. I'm not bothering today. I think I'll wait till Saturday and go to the church bingo drive. <laughs> Susan, haven't you found my gloves yet? Oh, sorry, Mother, I'll get them. By the way, Master James isn't going with us to church. Yes, I know. Here you are. Do you mean you're letting him, Miss Church? If anybody needs a sermon, it's him. You can talk. You only go to church to show off your best frocks and to see how good-looking the new curate is. <laughs> Jimmy, will you stop this? Set your scamp up to know. He's being his usual horrible self. And what's more, he said he's not going to church. Is that so? Well, you'll be at the church with us in five minutes, my lad. Or I'll know the reason why. Jimmy went to the children's service at nine o'clock, Father. Oh, did he? Yes, so I won't be with you in five minutes and you know the reason why. <laughs> all right, now, all right, that'll do. I'd still like to know why he got up early. Usually you can't drag him out of bed on a Sunday. Oh, shut up, you. I bet he's taking that guy of his out again. Oh, no, he isn't. Jimmy, remember what I told you when Mr. Higginbottom was here? I know, ma'am. He said I mustn't go out again collecting in the street. That's right, and don't you forget it. He wouldn't dare go out again. Now, come on, you two, Woodley. Right, Father. Come on, Susan. Bye-bye, brother dear. Ooh, thought they'd never go. Well, now to give Mr. Hoswell Higginbottom the bad news. Come on, come on. Wake up, big dumb. <laughs> Hello, is that you, Mrs. Higginbottom? Can I speak to my pal, Ozzy, please? Thank you. Hello? Is that you, slobber chop? <laughs> no, I don't want to share your fireworks. By tomorrow night, I'll have more than you. I'll collect the money today. And I know you can't, because you're going to your aunties for the day. King Kong told us, your father. I know my mum said I haven't to collect any more in the street. I'm not going to. I'm going to collect in the park. <laughs> any for the guy? Don't forget the guy, sir. Thank you, sir. Oh, hello, Jimmy. I was just having a walk through the park. Good. Keep walking. <laughs> I think you're very cruel sometimes. Look, Shirley, if the Black Hand Gang sees us, I'll, I'll have to play Puss in the Ring. Oh, that's a girl's game. Not the way they play it. <laughs> they stand round you in a ring and slap you in the puss. <laughs> oh, all right, I'll go. I didn't expect to see you anyway. I thought you'd been forbidden to do any more collecting. In the street, my mum said. This is the park. Oh, Jimmy, you are a twister. That's what Ozzy said, only he told me what kind of a twister I was. <laughs> I'll bet he's going mad because I'm collecting today and he can't. Funny talking about Ozzy. I saw him about half an hour ago speaking to Mrs. Billington. You did? That's right. Well, I don't. Hey, up. Oh. Hey, I've just seen her. Look, Vicky Billington. I think she spotted us. She's pointing her nose in this direction. <laughs> well, what does it matter? Well, you know what a mouth she's got. She's sure to tell me, Mum, she saw me collecting with me guy. Oh, she's coming. Oh, heck. Well, maybe she won't say anything. Who the human carrier pigeon? <laughs> she'll take one loop, tie a message to her leg, and she'll be off. Good morning, James. Shirley? Hello, Mrs. Pigeon, Beaky of Billington. Good morning, Mrs. Billington. Well, well, I must say you surprised me, James. You've given me a bit of a shock and all. I mean, it's a nice surprise to meet you when we were taking the guy for a walk. 
Mrs. Billington, Jimmy couldn't collect anything yesterday, and tomorrow is bonfire night, so he had to collect on Sunday. Oh, quite. Well, the better the day, the better the day. I mean, who am I to object if Mrs. Clitheroe approves? Well, uh, that's it. My mum doesn't know. Oh, well, it'll be a surprise for her then when the vicar tells her. Oh, heck. Well, how much have you collected? Four and threepence. But that's nothing to what I'll collect when I get home. As much as that. Oh, I thought you'd only just started from what Oswald told me. Oh, see, Higginbottom. Of course, he gave me your message. Eh? What message was that, Mrs. Billington? Oh, didn't you tell Shirley, James? Uh, no. Well, Shirley, perhaps you thought James was collecting money for his fireworks. Yes, I did. Yeah, well, you're wrong, isn't she? Is she? I mean, uh, she is. Yes, all the money James collects is for the vicar's bonfire fund for the poor children of the parish. Oh, blow me neck. <laughs> I must say, James, when Oswald told me, I was pleasantly surprised. I must remember to thank him tomorrow <laughs> with a Roman candle. <laughs> and it was very nice of you to want me to give the money to the vicar. He's too shy, I suppose, Shirley. Yes, yeah, shy, for and threatened. <laughs> well, well, if you give me the money, I'll make it up to five shillings and take it to the vicar. All right, here you are. Thank you, James. Oh, well, I'd better be off. Bye-bye for now. See you again. Look at her walking away with my money. She's not a pigeon, she's a thieving magpie. <laughs> Got it now. What a bonfire night it's going to be. <laughs> Look, Jimmy, I told you, I've got a box of fireworks at home. Oh, well, there's nothing else for it. We'll, we'll have to go together. Oh, good. But I let them off, and you keep back out of the way. Well away. Now, look here, in case you may get hurt, I mean. <laughs> All right. What time shall we meet you? Well, about half past... What do you mean, we? Well, you see... Uh, Gillian Simpson, Sheila Carter, and I brought the tensioning box between us, so they'd be clear of you. Oh, no, that does it. It's all off. All right. I hope you enjoy yourself watching everybody else letting fireworks off. Well, it's no good, Shirley. If the gang saw me with three of you, they'd burn a bit. Wait a minute. Unless... Okay, I'll do it. But if any of the gang come up, the three of you will have to pretend to be crying. Crying? What for? Look, if they think I'm helping you, I'll be shot. But if you're crying, it'll be all right. The gang might even promote me. <laughs> because they see us crying. Yes, because they'll think I pinch your fireworks. <laughs> Those involved with the Clitheroe Kid this week were Peter Sinclair as grandfather... Patricia Burke's mother, Leonard Williams as both Theodore Craythorpe and Harry Whittle, Danny Ross as Elsie Hall, and Diana Day as Susan. Also appearing were Tony Melody, Rosalie Williams, and Carol Gardner. The recorded program, written by James Casey and Frank Roscoe, was produced by James Casey and starred Jimmy Clitheroe as the kid himself. Shelly, I'm not letting the fireworks off after all. Mum says it's too dangerous, and I suppose she's right. Mr. Craythorpe is going to do it for us. And... Hurry up, Jane. This should be a very pretty one. Right on, Mr. Craythorpe. So listen, kids. Get somebody to let yours off. It's safer. Oh, oh, oh. But get somebody sensible. 